people often ask, well, doesn't the Bible support slavery? And we know slavery is wrong, so isn't the Bible supporting something that we know is wrong? And what we've got to do is when we look at a question like this is we've got to distinguish a number of different things in the Bible. The Old and the New Testament are talking about different things, different cultures, different times. And we've got to distinguish between what the Bible records and what it approves of. And although there were, I think, slaves in Bible times, I don't think there's anything in the Bible that suggests that this was a good thing. I also find that people aren't very careful when they think about what slavery is. Most people say, well, I'm against slavery. But then I ask them a question like, well, do you think it's all right for people uh, in life imprisonment for some terrible crime to be made to work? And most of them say, yeah, that's all right. Uh, so actually, they're not against people permanently being made to work. They're just against the wrong origins of some uh, forms of permanent labour. So I think we've got to distinguish between three different things. When we think of North American slavery, there were three things going on, two of which are always wrong, and a third of which is almost always wrong, but not always wrong. And one of them was the sheer unjust origin of it, that people were taken away from their homelands and uh, they were treated in a very unfair way. People did not become uh, slaves in that system through any fair treatment. Secondly, there is the oppression that went on, and that's a terrible thing. And thirdly, there's the permanent servitude. Now, most of us feel that permanent servitude uh, is not an injustice if someone has chosen themselves to go into it. If a Western woman chooses to go into a Middle Eastern harem, most of us have no problem. Uh, we, we think she'd be mad, but, but we, we don't feel an ethical injustice has been done to her. Likewise, if people have forfeited their freedom through some crime, we also feel rather differently about it. So what we see is that we need to divide up between the condition of permanent servitude, non-oppressive servitude, which is not in itself a moral evil if someone has got into that uh, through some terrible crime. Um, and we need to distinguish that from uh, the whole questions of slavery we're talking about today, modern day trafficking, which is of course a gross injustice and so on. So we've got to make sure that when we come back to the Bible, we're using the right categories to understand it. Now, what we find in the Bible is in the Bible, the Bible is completely against oppression. The Bible is completely against uh, people being manipulated by others. Uh, if uh, kidnapping was I I illegal. So in terms of the way people uh, came into servitude, the Bible doesn't approve of any uh, wrong way. Uh, in fact, it specifically tells the story of how Joseph was sold by his brothers uh, into Egypt, and that was clearly a bad thing. Then in the New Testament, people say, well, didn't the uh, Christians have a cosy relationship with Roman slavery? Well, again, Roman slavery is a slightly different thing. But what we've got to remember is that every church service, the watchword was Jesus is Lord. That's what Christians used to say. And the word Lord really means the same as master. So they understood that Jesus was master of everyone and that there was no one who was slave or free if they were in Christ. Everyone was free from sin and they were slave of Christ, in, not in the sense that he's a slave owner and oppressive, but in the sense that they owe everything to him.